beach lover. I'm so glad you joined me today. And before we get started with this painting, I just wanted to show you some of the tools that I used for these paintings. So I purchased these Da Vinci Pro panels from Jerry's Art Arama. And what they look like, this is an eight by 10, it's birch wood. So they, they should last, basically. The humidity shouldn't bother them too much. I don't want these paintings to go outside, but I was thinking if someone puts it in the bathroom or if someone puts it outside, at least it'll last a little bit longer. But you can see here, it's got a smooth wood finished. It's already sanded down, so I don't have to do that work. I did put a coat of gesso, and my gesso is the Master's Touch brand, which you can get at Hobby Lobby, which soaked into the wood and gave me a nice tooth for the paintings. This painting is one of my Sea of Glass collection paintings that came out in the fall of 2022. This is one in a set of six. Four of those were eight by tens, which is the size of the painting that I'm working on now. This particular painting is a stingray. This is inspired by a trip to the Keys that I took with my husband and the kids a few years ago. We had such a nice time. Um, my brother let us borrow his boat to take with us, which was really cool. The place we rented had a dock we were able to rent so we could put the boat in and put it in the dock in the complex, take it out. We went out one day and had just a beautiful day of snorkeling and playing in the water. Now granted, the reef wasn't as beautiful as I expected. Apparently it's a dying reef, but we did see a few things while we were out there, one of which was a big beautiful stingray I caught a glimpse of. And honestly, I'd never seen one under the water or anywhere other than like SeaWorld. It was huge and beautiful. And um, so we spent a lot of time snorkeling and oh my gosh, I was so nervous because the kids took off and I was like, okay, well, I know you're good swimmers, but this is different, you're in the ocean you know, just in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> but they actually did really, really well. Um, one of the kiddos did come back and get a life vest because she was getting a little bit tired. And that made me feel a little bit better. And um, just knowing they don't swim laps, they're not like professional swimmers or anything. And yes, you're just kind of floating on top of the water. But still, as a mom, I was just nervous for all of them. <laughs> And um, yeah, they had a really good time. It was a good opportunity for us to spend a vacation with all of our kids together. We had one exception. I have a daughter with grandbabies and it wouldn't have been a good trip for them. So they didn't come with us, but the rest of the kids did and it was really, really nice. Like I said, the water was just gorgeous. The day was beautiful. The water couldn't have been more calm. And um, we came in from the day we were exhausted. We had such a great time. We spent some time in the pool afterwards. We had uh, an attempt to go out on another day, but unfortunately it was pretty rocky. I mean, we went out and it was just, the boat was just smack in the water and we're like, nope, we're not gonna do this. And we brought the boat back in, which I thought was kind of funny. Even though it wasn't the perfect trip, it was something I think we'll all remember for a long, long time because it's the first time that our families have vacation together. Usually it's either me and the girls, him and the boys. Um, I think one time it was the two of us and some of the kids, but um, we rarely get together. I look forward to be able to having <clears throat> all four kids together on one vacation. I think that's really cool. You know, we have plans for the future to be able to take our families and their kids on vacation to Disney and to the mountains. But that's something that's gonna come later in retirement and we're working on saving up so that hopefully that's something we can do one day. All right, so I'm gonna get on to explaining how I planned for this collection. One of the things I did during planning is I took several reference photos and I drew them out in some different directions, kind of moving them around a little bit at a time. 
I really needed to get a feel for what it actually looked like, how I can manipulate the image, make these images unique so that I'm not just copying someone else's image. So I basically needed to get to know the, the creatures. I also went to a, an aquarium, I think is what it was called, and they had some stingrays in an exhibit and unfortunately it's not like they were taking care of injured stingrays it's for educational purposes only which is kind of kind of irritating because I think it's sad that they should live their life in a little tank however I took some of my own pictures I was able to feel the skin um, and see their eyes up close what it looked like and that's something I wasn't getting from pictures online you know at least here I was able to really see what they look like and that helped me as I was developing the um, the image of this particular stingray so after the sketching sketchings are done sketches are done um, the way I decided to paint these and I didn't really show it in uh, the videos because it just makes it too long I kind of did an assembly line so basically what I would do is I set up all six boards and I gessoed every single one of them. Well, first I taped them all off on the edges, then I gessoed them. So I did, I think two layers of gesso was plenty for these. Then I went through and I painted a layer of the background. So the light blue down to the dark blue and then I would go back, because I wanted these all to be very, very, very similar, I wanted them to look alike, but just have different creatures. So it makes sense to keep the colors consistent and to keep the backgrounds consistent to do them all at the same time. So after I did that, I went back through and I did a second coat of the background to kind of get it a little bit smoother. Then from that point on, after I had the background the way I wanted it, I went and did each individual painting one at a time. And that took a lot more time to do. And the first one I did, I think was my sea turtle. And I didn't like the way I did the light. You may have seen that, I'll link it here. Um, I did post that one online. I didn't like the way I did the light, so I changed the way the reflections look. I made them look kind of a little bit lighter, um, where they have bright spots for the light and I think it turned out a lot better so I ended up bringing that look into all of the rest of the paintings and so the stingray turned out really 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 beautiful I was blessed to have my artwork in a local show at our hourglass brewery in Longwood and it was part of our last minute art show each piece had to be under $200 and all my pieces sold except for one which um, was super exciting. So that one still goes out to shows with me. I didn't show my stingray just yet. It's still got a little bit of work to be done and I'll explain that at the end of the video. But I think it's the first time that I had such a successful collection in a single show. And it's, it's super exciting to try something new. And I knew, I knew the ladies would love this. And I, um, just the way the the glass sparkles with the resin it's just it's so pretty and I love them too that I knew they were gonna sell so I had a lot of confidence in this collection and um, I was blessed with some really good sales this time around So as you can see in the video, I'm using two different types of glass. So I figured I'd take a minute to show you exactly what I'm using. So this dark blue glass is actually crushed wine bottle. And as you can see, the shapes vary to the other types of glass that I used, but it's very beautiful and it's got this dark blue color. Now, if you've ever been to like a Michaels or a Hobby Lobby and you've seen these decorative rounds this is still glass however when it breaks it's a safety glass so it it breaks into these tiny little pieces 
and it gives that crushed glass effect. So as you can see, the shape is very different than what I get with the wine bottle glass. And I actually, at first when I was doing it, I was a little disappointed that the glasses were, were so different, but I ended up really enjoying the difference of the textures. It really makes each painting a little bit more interesting. And I did crush the glass by hand. So when I crushed the wine bottle glass, it was a bit of an adventure because I had to learn how to do it. I watched some videos on some different ways to do it. But in reality, what I found worked best for me was I have this big concrete block that I use. I put the glass down in there. I put my safety glasses on. I put a safety mask on and I wear it. I wear long sleeves because I don't want any glass to fly up at me. And I take, I have a really big chisel and a hammer and I just make some small taps and that's really all it takes to crush the glass. The glass for the most part stays contained in the cinder block. And then when I'm done, I pick up the block and I have all this beautiful crushed glass. These round pieces of glass were quite different. So the process for that was I was heating it up in a pan for 15 minutes on high, wearing safety glass with a cover on it, um, nothing happened, but I would not leave the room. Um, it does create kind of an odd smell, which I think had to do with the um, the nonstick surface of my pans. I think that was creating the smell contained with the glass. So not super safe, but worth trying, I'd say. After that, I would do the same thing. I would take the glass in eventually, first I was just hitting it with a hammer to break it with like cloth over it, like jeans or some sort of plastic. And the glass, of course, cuts through all of those things. So I ended up taking those out to the cinder block as well. I just put them down there. It's a little harder because they're so small and round. And I would hit it a couple of times until I got it as small as I wanted it. And so I do have some varied shapes. And if you're interested in trying something like this at home, I highly recommend rinsing the glass when you're done because the glass dust will settle in here and it'll pop up in your resin, which is one of the problems I had with most of these pieces. I, even though I wiped them down, there was still resin dust on each piece of glass, which rose to the surface when I completed uh, the first coat of resin. So I had to sand them down and do it again, which then, you know, turn into some other things. So I did eventually get them done. They turned out beautiful, but rinse your glass if you're gonna cut it yourself. And I would even recommend purchasing pre-crushed glass uh, because it does take a lot of time. I enjoy crushing the glass, but sometimes I just wanna sit down and do art and not have to go through that part first. For those of you who are interested on how I did the glass, on this painting. I wanted to get each piece exactly where I wanted it. So I used, I started with Elmer's glue all, which is, which is what you see there in the painting and it dries clear and it's acid free. It's a really good glue for art. And by the time I got to the last few pieces, I ended up changing to Elmer's school glue, clear transparent because I am doing it with resin so it's not like I need the special glue all in order for them all to stick because the glue is just to hold it in place and to help me assemble it where I want it so nothing rolls away. And then I resin over it and it's going to stick to the wood and get into all the grooves. I used art resin, which is a non-toxic resin, in order to create the outer coating. Um, it's beautiful, it dries crystal clear, and it's really easy to work with. Now, I'm, supposedly I don't need to wear a mask because of the fumes. I, being a little overly precautious, I do still wear a mask because I did do this resin in my studio. I have a window without a screen. I opened the window, I kept the curtains a little bit closed. I keep a fan to blow air out 
and yeah so that's how I protect myself from resin and I really enjoyed this um, I did learn a few things I made a few mistakes along the way which like I said is is all part of learning something new but um, these are just beautiful beautiful pieces the resin was the perfect resin and I watched a lot of videos before I got started especially from the art resin shop to make sure that I was doing things correctly I also purchased this bin it's just a regular plastic storage bin from Target I believe it has a lid these bins are perfect because I'm able to put the lid on it stick it on the shelves in my studio closet and I can keep them level everything dries and then I just pull them out I label what's on it so I know when it should be done I put the date on the label so that I know when I started the resin and when to start checking it so there's a few things that I learned in the process of this of making these which is always the best part about trying something new I would have never done resin a year ago I just wouldn't have um, I love and hate it <laughs> it's one of the things that I learned another thing is that if you bring your resin to the edges you can get a nice domed edge like this looks very very professional I can bring my resin down along the sides I don't have to paint that I can leave it bring it down or I can dome it and leave it just the way it is and it could just be that wood finish I like the way this shiny finishes on this when I use glass I'm putting resin over the glass and it doesn't really mute the edges very much it's still pretty sharp so I don't like people to touch the pieces at the shows um, but it does add some glossiness to the areas where maybe there's like scratch marks in the glass so that makes it very very beautiful temperature control is another thing so I tried to do some resin it was a different project in the winter after having a really successful one in the summer and I couldn't figure out what the issue was well the first 24 hours of your resin uh, curing you need to have the temperature in your house stable or the room which for me means the house has to be stable it can't be going up and down so I learned that I can't do resin in the winter here because our AC is just working up and down so really spring and fall is best for me because I can keep the house about 72 degrees which is still comfortable when we sleep at night I don't have to worry about my husband adjusting the air conditioner and then that creates a stable temperature for the first 24 hours while the resin is drying and getting its first bit of curing I bought some shelves in my little studio closet specifically where I can put my resin away and it can still be level and can dry without it having to take up my entire studio because that was one of the things I was trying to do this and trying to get ready for Christmas last fall and it was just is taking up a lot of space and I needed to be able to put it away not constantly look at it and bring it back out when I was ready to check it so I was able to do that I did have some issues with the cure on this one I can't exactly be sure what it was so maybe I didn't mix it all the way um, it does have some waves in the in the top layer so what I'm gonna have to do is sand it down and try again it's a little bit sticky so I know the cure is not complete so I'm gonna do that probably in the next few months this one probably <laughs> to be honest probably won't go up for sale because I put so much work into it um, and it's my favorite of all the pieces the stingrays we do see stingrays from time to time out at the beach um, we've seen more sharks than stingrays lately but you know a lot of times when I'm out there surfing you can see their little their little fins I guess if that's what you want to call them I don't know the technical term uh, come out of the water and you think it's a shark but the, a lot of them are rays anyway so yeah that's all the things I learned in this project and I have to tell you it was an emotional journey just doing this collection because I love the way resin looks and it feels like it's gonna be so easy but it only takes a second to make a mistake and 
I tend to be a bit of a perfectionist. So I want that perfect shine, no bubbles, no nothing in there that they show you on the videos. And it just doesn't happen for me. There's always, there's always gonna be a little bit of bubbles. There might be a little bit of lint despite the fact that I cover it from the moment I'm done. And um, I have to decide if that's okay. People purchased my art even though it had imperfections. So it bothers me more than it bothers my customers. So I need to decide if I want to continue doing something like this. And obviously the only way to get better and to get a more perfect finish is to practice. So if I stop now, that's not gonna happen. But if I keep going, I might be able to get it to be a more beautiful finish. So as you can probably guess, the reason it's so frustrating is because I'm resonating over an original painting. It's not a poor painting I did in five minutes. This was a painting that took me about eight hours to do. And then I'm gonna resin over it, which can ruin it. <laughs> As in this case, almost ruin it. Or can make it just five times prettier because of that beautiful coating. So, I don't know. I've learned a lot. I haven't decided what I'm gonna do if I'm gonna do it again. I think I probably will. Um, I'll probably do a little bit more practice before I go into it again. And I've learned a lot about making sure my glass is really, really clean so that I don't get um, little glass dust popping up. Making sure the, um, the resin is properly mixed, is fairly new, isn't sitting out for a long time. If I open it, I need to use it within 30 days uh, to make sure that it's good because all of that stuff makes a difference. And um, I've learned so much, I had so much fun, and I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me, and hopefully I'll see you at the beach. I got a new surfboard, so it's that baby blue one with the swirls. If you see me out there on my longboard, say hi.